Good evening. Happy Saturday afternoon, evening, Buccaneer fans all over the place. This is Matt from OKC coming to you live from the Buck Wild Show here on Bucks Report. We're going to be doing things a little different tonight. Um, normally, you know, it's usually me and Teresa Baxter, but Teresa's feeling a little under the weather. So we're going to run solo for the evening and maybe a couple of friends will drop in. We'll just see how that goes. But we're here. <clears throat> it's halftime on the USFL game. So if you're into that game, you can at least watch us for a few minutes so we can get started here tonight. Maybe we can keep you sticking around afterwards with a good conversation and talk a little bit about the Buccaneers. You know, I was watching this game a minute ago and it caught the corner of my eye because I'm trying to do five different things at once. The Birmingham Stallions if you catch them in just the right light at just the right angle at just the long <laughs> right second are wearing the old Buccaneer uniforms from back in the golden days, back in the seventies. And uh, it's hard to watch them because the, the core, the colors are just about right, but you know, it's not the same. However, <clears throat> every once in a while, I get a flashback of Jimmy Giles or Doug Williams or James Wilder running down the sideline. Whenever I see the, the stallions in the corner of my eye. It's a weird thing. Maybe it's just me. I'm old. My eyes are bad. So you never really know what's going on in my head. But it's something I noticed. Maybe other people see it too. <clears throat> I apologize. My voice just decided to quit on me. And I don't know what's going on here. Oh, that's a little better. Never ceases to uh, fail that as soon as you need something to happen, something goes wrong. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened this week with us. So it's the week before the draft. We got nothing going on in Tampa, really. So we have to create headlines. In a lot of ways, people are doing that right now as they're doing mock drafts and and second mock drafts and 55th mock drafts and the day of mock drafts and the draft of the mock draft that was just drafted in the mock draft of last week. And I, I just can't go that route. I can't play that game. Um, some guys like to do it. I just don't. And and the reason is this. I have an idea what I want to see the, the Buccaneers do in the draft. I have a general idea of uh, what's available out there at the location we're on the 27th pick. And the likelihood of us going up to get somebody new and that kind of thing is kind of intriguing to some people. But honestly – What's going to happen is going to happen. And we can talk about it all we want. It's just blowing wind. However, having said that, I did run across on the BucksReport.com or Facebook slash Bucks Report, if you want to go there and look for it. There's a pretty good article there uh, that was put out around a couple, three, four days ago called Narrowing Down the Buccaneers First Round Big Board. And as far as those types of articles go, I like the way it's written. It basically goes through the top 12 people that are, are on the board in people's minds. I don't know who the guy is that's thinking these names up, but that's where they came up with them. And their positions and the likelihood that we're going to take them. I suggest you read it. It's kind of cool. Uh, it blows a lot of things out of the water about what might happen next and, you know, all the things that are going to happen leading up to the 27th pick and whatever. What it boils down to is do we need the guy? Do we have depth at that position? And what's the best option that's going to be available? And I think you ought to give it a look. It's a pretty good article. I liked it. It's a quick read. You don't have to spend your weekend reading it. But uh, 
it gives you an awful lot of information, plus a bunch of hyperlinks if you're into that to go find out a little bit more about all the players that are listed in that list. It's an interesting thing to read, and it's quick and easy. So give that a look while you're uh, doing your thing this weekend. What I haven't done yet is I haven't put the link in and uh, shown you guys how to get in touch with us. If you want to come on and be a part of the show, we welcome that. You don't have to come on live. You can just be an avatar with your voice. It's just like being on the phone, but you're doing it through your microphone on your phone, not calling people. So you don't have to wait on hold. And uh, here's the link right here. It's from the StreamYard app. All you got to do is click on it in whatever format you're in. And um, whether it's YouTube or whether it's Facebook, or whether it's Twitter, whatever, hit that. You'll come up to a screen that says turn your mic on and select your avatar. If you don't want your picture in there, just take one of the ones that's in the list or take Mr. Nobody. And um, we'll see you down in the basement, just like my friend Mr. Rick Hughes is. And I will bring you in as soon as uh, we have an opportunity to do it. You're not going to be stuck on hold. You can still conversate through the, uh, through the uh, comments section of your whatever page you're watching and um, be part of the program. But having said that, I'm going to bring in Rick Hughes right now. He didn't bring his picture. He just brought his hugs and he's here to help me out because I'm shorthanded tonight. You know him from uh, the show Bucks AF. He's uh, starting up a new venture this week. Actually, it's a reboot of uh, the uh, show he used to have a while back. And I'll let y'all let him talk to you about that when he gets an opportunity on here. Let me give him a click. There he is. I got to do Hey, some- brother. Hey, man. Let me get some stuff out of the way. I got a little fancy with myself, and I think I screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> Too much art. Not enough. Yep. Not enough. <laughs> Just leave things alone is what I should have done. <laughs> nah. There we go. Now there we're go. cooking with gas. So, what do you think, Mr. Rick? What are we going to do? Are we going to draft the whole top 10? We're going to flip over 16 or go down to five? You got okay. any ideas? I, I have no clue what we're going to do. Um, and as usual, Jason Light has not telegraphed what we're going to do. He does a very good job of that. Uh, I have what I would like us to do. Um, I would like for us to trade down. I would like for us to just start amassing picks, even if if it's for next year. Um, I, I don't think rookies are the answer this year. Uh, so I don't know if we could trade down and just you know add a pick or two next year. Trade down again, add another pick or two uh, next year. I would I, I would love that. Uh, I do think, look, I, I mean, let, let's let take a look and ask yourself, where are the weakest points on this team? I guess offensive line or defensive line, edge rusher maybe. Um, I guess we could use another wide receiver. Um, I mean, there are – this is a, it's a pretty strong team. Uh, I think where we were the weakest – uh, the I think that you know our defensive backs I think we're looking much better there this year. So you know with the addition of Logan Ryan and um, I mean I, I I just feel like this this I'm excited about this year's team and the the NFC got easier the Bucks got better. Um, it it just this this feels good. Um, but everybody get on board with the fact. Ninety percent. This is probably the you know the last hurrah with Brady. Let's enjoy it. Let's not let's, let's not spend the entire year worrying about what Brady's going to do next year and complaining and saying, "Oh, we're going to be bad next year." This that whatever. Stop well, it. Well, next year hadn't got here yet. <laughs> right. Just enjoy the ride and let's let it play itself out. And, I agree with you one hundred percent. I don't. I don't uh, see it. Well, I see needs, but I don't see anything that's glaring. You know, where we had we yeah. not gotten Brady, we probably had a glaring needed quarterback, but right. we fixed that. Yeah. And the only two that are left now that people are talking about, and, and Jason Light, you saw the press conference. It kind of sounded to me like he was saying, well, I'm tired of talking about we're getting nowhere with it, so we'll just leave it open 
and they can call me whenever they're interested in talking about it. And that's, that's, uh, Ndamukong Sue and, um, and, um, uh, Oh, somebody else. JPP. I JPP. Think is- yeah. I don't know if you saw JPP's tweet, um, today, or uh, he put out him on an airplane. He was heading to Mexico, but he said, basically he said, all right, Tampa, goodbye. I'm out. Uh, now, was he just talking about going to Mexico or was he talking about he's, he's gone. Uh, it, it, it felt it felt like maybe he was saying, you I'm know, done. I'm out. Yeah, I'm out. Uh, Tampa, <laughs> I'm out. Like maybe he's gonna go somewhere else. But yeah, you know who knows. But the thing is this: he was injured all of last year, or a lot right. of last year. Okay, and the the team did fine, fine without him. Um, which I, I, look, I'm this is nothing against him. He's older. At some point, you move on. I think this is a position we can afford to start to move forward and let Joe Tryon Sroyinka do his thing. Um, we got stronger behind him. Let him do his thing. And, you know, at some point, at, at some point, all right, it, it's his turn. I yeah, and I, I agree with you. We, you, you know, we had a good team two years ago that went to the Super Bowl and won it. But you have to re- be realistic. You had a bunch of antiques on that shelf i mean there <laughs> there was a bunch of guys that were in their last few years of their career making a grand well, that, run, but those guys gonna, are still here some of them are and some of them are up in the air like jpp and, and sue and sue's coming back. i think sue's I'm, coming back i think sue's coming i think back. sue's coming back too but i if he doesn't i can understand i mean my god he he got drafted before i got married so <laughs> yeah well i mean here's 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 my take. Yeah, I mean, if you if you saw my inbox, you would see how many people are panicking about Gronk. Yeah, we'll and Sue, so, and and look, especially especially the fact that Brady just restructured his contract. Right. Look, I, honestly, Gronk probably said, "I'll come back if I can announce it at my party at the draft or something similar." Right. You know, he's got. The draft is in Las Vegas starting on Thursday. At the same time that the draft is going on, Gronk has this big, huge, massive party that he's throwing. Hmm. In, in Vegas. In Vegas. <laughs> kind of, kind of, you know, and now, okay, you see him working out with Derrick Henry. And keep in mind, what did he say? If I come back and play, it will be with Tampa. That's what he, he said. said that. Yeah. Oh, dude. That's Do you hear that? Yeah, that's comforting. That's a tornado. That's I'm a not going to be able to warning. stay on tonight. Okay, we're brother. In, we're, we're in a tornado watch zone right now till midnight, and that's right across the street, so we don't want to screw that up. All right, brother. Well, you go take care of yourself. I, I think I'm going to go dig a hole or go over to the high school and get in the auditorium and meet a few neighbors. <laughs> All right, man. See you later. And Slick, I see you in there. I apologize. The weather is just going straight to hell in a handbag. It's springtime in Oklahoma, and you don't play around when those things go off. So I'm going to have to check out tonight. You guys have a good evening. Thank you, Rick. Sorry, Keith, if if you're out there. I apologize, but got to do what I got to do. Y'all have a 